Hello everyone, it's Laura here. I'm just going to get up the live chat and I am about 10 minutes early for my live stream. Now today's live stream is a little bit different. Here we go, there's the chat. So um, I was requested by a friend um, to help her with the skin on this page. And I thought, you know, I haven't done a live stream in a while, um, so why not um, have some fun um, showing you guys how to do this page. So um, before I start though, since I know I'm early, I thought I'd just go through some of my works in progress that I've been working on um, over the past couple weeks. I know I haven't really updated you guys for a while. So, hello, you're welcome. So one of the pages that I've been working on is this one here. This is from the artist edition of my coloring book. Um, so I'm, I'm showing a little bit of video on Instagram. Um, if you watch my Instagram. Hi, Kina. Thanks for joining me. Um, but eventually I'll put together all of the little clips into a YouTube video for you guys. So that's coming up in the future. I also recently finished this little, it's actually a, a card. Um, I haven't written in it yet, but there's the back. And, um... I made this for my boyfriend for Valentine's Day. Um, it's also a color along I have going along in my Facebook group. So that I just finished. A little while ago in my Facebook group, I'm just showing you guys a little bit of what we do over there. I created this worksheet and I did like color examples of different noses and stuff. So I'll be doing more fun little exercises like this over at my Facebook group. So if you want to get those freebies, um, you probably want to join. Um, two other works in progress. You guys know by now, um, I do a lot of work in progress. So here's one. And this is my Aries girl. Um, I'm doing like a zodiac. And then here's my Pisces. So I did these in watercolor, which was a lot of fun. You can see they're kind of shiny still. Um, another piece I've been working on for quite a while now. Um, something from Fabrica Fantasy. And um, I love this page. I just haven't gotten around to finishing it yet. Another page I'm working on is um, my a friend of mine, actually. Her name is Cindy, and I did a portrait of her, so I'll probably be finishing this up soon. And then another work in progress. Um, I have this book, and out of it, a lot of people have been doing this color along, so I started mine too. So it's getting there. So those are all my works in progress. Let's see, I'm waiting for the lady who asked me to do this. I'm waiting for her to join. Um, just gathering all those bits up. All right. Um, yeah, she asked me, um, she struggled with how to do the face in this drawing. Um, and so I thought I'd show you, I'm going to definitely cover the face, but I'll try and also do the hand as well in this video. And I'll just show you my approach and how I do it. Um, but we'll see, hopefully she shows up soon. We're looking for Angela. Angela, if you're in the house, um, say hello in the chat. Um, so I've been friends with Angela for quite a while now, and, and we mostly converse and, like, check each other out on Instagram. Um, but when she asked me for help with this page, I thought, you know, well, I'm sure she's not the only one with this question, so 
I thought I would just do a little live stream for us. Um, but yeah, so I hope everybody's Friday is going really well. Um, sorry I'm early, guys. I just, uh, I was ready to record, so I started. <laughs> but, um, she should be here at least in the next six minutes or so. Um, so I have a growing pencil collection, uh, something else that I haven't shared with you guys for a while. So the last time I made a video about my supplies, I had very few, um, but that doesn't last long for a series of colorists. You guys know that. Um, so I've been collecting pencils, um, and one of the new pencil sets that I have here, I'll move this off for right now, um, I got these Marco Renoir pencils and I put all of my pencils in these rolls I just love them I think they're super portable and really fun to um, take with me so I have these pencils we can try um, at some point on this channel I've already started using these so that's fun um, I also got a small set for Christmas from a dear friend of Polychromos now I've already started adding additional, so I bought two other pencils um, to start. I actually have a couple more coming um, to help with my collection of skin tones for this set. Um, but yep, so eventually in the future, um, actually not very much longer, um, I will be able to do requests in polychromos. I know you guys have been asking me to do this, so really, really cool that now I have some of these guys. So that's that set there. I also recently have acquired quite a few different other more premium brands. Well, hello, Andrea. How are you doing? So good to see you. So I also picked up these Creme Dash Luminance pencils, which several people have recommended to me. Um, so I got a whole bunch of different colors for skin. Um, I didn't know what I was picking, so um, I just sort of picked based on what the swatch was online. Some of them didn't turn out exactly as I thought, but um, hopefully that will give me a nice set of um, starter pencils for that set. And then I also, um, as a gift for Christmas, got these Holbein um, oil pencils, and they are just beautiful. Now, I don't have a whole lot of them, um, but the colors I have are really pretty. Um, and then uh, I also have these really beautiful vintage pencils, um, which you guys may or may not have seen me using at some point. Um, when I first got them, I was using them a lot. And they're so nice that I kind of, now I just save them for special occasions. So um, what's great is now I can do some skin tutorials in luminance. And um, hopefully soon I'll be able to do some in whole lines as well. Um, but I'm guessing that we're probably going to be using Prismacolor for this video. Oh, fun. Alrighty. Alright, everybody's still here? Hello, Janet! Alright, so Ange just replied that she uses Polychromos or Prismacolor. Um, since I don't quite have all of my poly yet. We'll use the Prismacolor. Hello, Kay. Nice to see everyone. Thank you all for joining. Um, okay, so Anne just somewhere, um, she just replied in my Instagram messenger. So she should be coming along soon. Um, so yeah, for all of you who are just joining, yeah, I'm so glad that you can make it too, Janet. This is exciting. I haven't done a live stream in a while. Um, so for everybody who's new and who just joined, um, 
I had a request from a dear friend. Um, her name is Angela. Hello, Nana from Holland. Welcome. So good to see everybody. And Dawn, hello. Yeah, I don't think we've streamed together. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining. Um, so Angela had a little bit of trouble with this page and she wanted me to show her how to do the face and I thought, well, it's a pretty simple profile um, and luckily um, there are a lot of pages um, that have like a straight dead on profile. So I thought this would be a fun page just to go ahead and show you guys how I would do it. Um, so it's now 10 o'clock, so I'm going to get started. Um, she'll, she'll pick up um, what she misses later. Um, so for this page, since she's looking in that direction, um, generally what I like to do is light the subject so that the silhouette of their face is in the light. Um, I don't do this with every profile, but in general, when, when we're talking about a profile image, like, since she's looking this way, I'm going to light the page from the top left. So what that means is that these are the areas that are going to get light. We're going to have light along her forehead, along her nose here, her cheek area, a little bit in her chin, and this plane here right above her upper lip. And we'll have some other smaller highlights too, but mostly the rest of it will be in shadow. So I'm going to just start, um, I'm going to get started. Hello? Ange, is that you? I don't actually know your YouTube handle. Hopefully that's, that's our Ange. Angela. Oh, yay. Hello. All right. Okay, so we can get started. So I have this printed, um, I went to the little print shop and I had it printed on Bristol, but you can print this on whatever paper um, you prefer. People just have always asked, you know, what paper, <laughs> what paper are you using? Um, so since I've decided my angle of light, which um, again, for all you newcomers is, is coming from this direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, this is one of my favorite colors. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad that you're okay. Oh, don't be scared, Daria. Yeah, um, I, I'll have the rest of the set of the polys that I ordered, hopefully pretty soon, so I can do some in that um, pencil brand, too. Um, but today we're going to use Prismas, because that's what I have um, handy here. So, um, hello, Connie. Welcome, dear. Um, so I'm grabbing this uh, PC943. This is one of my favorite colors um, for basing out the shadows. So what I'm going to do is when I pick where to put the, the cheekbones, <laughs> mm -hmm. agreed Dawn, no matter what. Um, so you can see here, I, I sort of started off a little bit of shading. I don't know. The light's kind of um, cruddy today. Um, so sorry about that. It's just really rainy out, so there's not a whole lot of light. But there's some some um, shadow here, so I'm just going to start right there. And what I'm doing is I'm using the flat of the pencil, so I'm not up and down, but I'm more using the flat of the pencil. Oh, that's great, Dawn. Well, hopefully I can do a whole lot more videos. Um, I had a little bit of free time today. So hopefully let's um, get in some good info for you guys. So I'm just going in and adding some shadows. And I start with her cheekbone. Just because this big broad expanse of space is kind of intimidating. So if you can kind of knock that out right away and make it less scary, then it feels like it's a more approachable 
I understand portraits can be scary, but once you figure out a couple of tricks, So I'm also going to shade the ear here with this color. So what's happening is, is because the light is hitting this section here of her cheek, the shallower part of her cheek and the, and the part of her face that falls a little bit away from the light will all be in shadow. So I'm actually going to bring this down even more, but I'm lightening up the pressure on the pencil. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get this paper covered. I'm not too worried about being perfect. What I'm looking for is just to tone out and get rid of that white of the paper. Let's see. Can you guys see okay? I'm going to zoom in a little. Is that blurry though? I think that's okay. All right, so now I'm going to also start right here in the corner of her eye. And this area can be kind of tricky. But I'm just going to walk you through how I'll do it. So I am using the cues that I already have down and just extending them and figuring out exactly where the lights and shadows are going to go. And I'm using such light pencil pressure. Hello, Cynthia. Welcome. Good to see you, dear. I'm using such light pencil pressure that if I need to, I can erase. And this establishes the lights and the darks of the drawing while allowing some mistakes to be made at this initial stage. So it really is less intimidating once you know you can erase it. So I'm just softening out that edge there. All right. And now let's do the forehead as well. So there's a ridge line here, which gets light. And the edge of the forehead would get light because of the way that the light is hitting it. But we're going to have this little shallow area here where it's a little less facing the light. In that area I'm going to just shade with a little bit. Pencil. Now I'm going to leave off um, doing the hair or anything else in this video. I'm just going to focus on the skin. But if it goes well, then we can finish it up another time. But I am um, giving like a drop shadow right below the hairline. Let's do the ears so that it's not out of place. Alright, now this area here, hello Bridget, nice to see you, I don't understand, but it's good to see you. <laughs> thank you, thank you Cynthia. Alright, so right here is a little bit of detail, um, but we will need to put some of this in shadow. So this little corner of her nose, I'm going to just put some of this. Same color, I'm still using the, um, the 943. And also this area right underneath her cheek line, like her little smile line here. Oh, yeah, this drawing, um, I really loved doing this drawing. She does seem sweet, doesn't she? She's like a cute little Victorian girl. Um, so we don't want to put too much shadow here just yet. I'm always a little timid about that area because on the lady it can end up looking like a mustache if we're not careful. <laughs> um, that's happened to me once or twice. So 
Yeah, now I'm a little bit more timid about that. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. If I'm not careful, I get one of those myself. Alrighty. <laughs> oh my goodness. So now just accentuating this jawline here. And let's work on the neck that's below. Now see, what I'm doing is I'm just establishing everything that's not in the light. So anything that goes in shadow, we'll get this nice light base color. So again, with the chest area, we're going to do the same thing. Oh. oh, thank you. I'm so glad that you learn with me. Aww. Well, I do it for you guys. I, I love helping out, so um, that's the goal to give you guys some help to have fun chatting all right so hopefully this is helping um and if anybody has any questions oh yeah yeah well you know why not i'm a colorist too i that's how I started. I'm no different than you guys. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be here. Really, really excited. You know, like, um, Ange asked me this question. And I was like, oh, you know, I have so many other whips and stuff. But I think I can just do a quick live stream and knock out that question. Oh, gosh, guys. All right, I'm blushing. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just a regular person. Just like you. Um, there's, you know, there's really no reason not to be humble. Um, okay. So now we have... Let's zoom out just so you guys can get an overall. Let's see if it will zoom out. So what I have here is a basic undertone of all the areas that are definitely in the shadow. But I feel like there's still some refinement that needs to happen here with the cheeks. And this happens every time I, I like pull away from something or take a step back. I always see things that need to be changed. So I'm just softening up. The line here, the contour, so it's not so straight. Softening up this here so it's not too harsh or straight. See, with ladies, I love to give everything a little bit of curviness and softness. I just feel like it makes um, a more feminine. But if you want her to be more edgy, then, then harder lines and sharper lines are actually a good thing. It all depends on the look you're going for. But for me, since I'm going for like a feminine, very girly sort of look here. Alright, so now it's got a definite idea of where the lights and darks go. And I do this because then, you know, I can build up depending on, this is like a road map, if you will. So I'm going to do the same thing for the hand, just so you guys can get a sense of where the darkest and lightest areas are. So I'm going to start here with the base of this thumb here. This is definitely in shadow. And again, our light is coming from here. 
So we're going to have some trickiness here with this thumb. But that's okay, we can, do, we can work through it. So this whole base of the thumb will be in shadow. And same with under here. So again, always by just keeping in mind where your light source is, that's the best trick I know to keeping a consistent lighting style throughout the whole piece. And this is going to come around like this, kind of. So what I do when I do these lighting exercises is I just picture the object in the lighting space, if you will. So that, this little bit right there will have a little bit of light, but doesn't need a lot. And then this area down here will be in darkness. And if you ever get stuck, take a look at yourself, take a look at pictures, whatever makes you happy. Um, luckily I just uh, have a lot of experience drawing hands and um, faces so that's what I'm going off of here but um, you know I look at myself every time I get stuck you know just grab a mirror Oh, you're very welcome, Janet. Yeah, you know, it's it's very difficult. Um, lighting is something that even the best artists have trouble with sometimes. So um, it's nothing to be ashamed of uh, if you need help. Um, so I am giving a little bit of shadow because it's... So it's being shadowed by her thumb, but also by the rose itself, the bulk of that object. So there is some shadow going on right here, right here, and we have a light source, but we'll still have some shadow. We'll leave part of that knuckle. And so I'm just using lighter pressure. Yep, okay, and then I want to do the same for actually this part of her thumb. So she has a, a knuckle here. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like it. Um, yeah, just uh, thought I would have some fun with you guys. <laughs> I will try as best I can, as long as my schedule allows it. Yeah, I mean, when when Ann asked for help, I was like, you know, I think, I think that more than just one person might benefit from it, so let's do a live stream. I'm glad you guys like it. Okay, so at this point here, um, I might want to soften this up actually. So I've just mostly used um, the flat of the pencil, so I don't have a whole lot of detail, like it's still kind of sketchy, 
That's okay. We can we can go ahead and um, smooth all that out later. So I've just used the flat of the pencil in this one color. And what I've done now is I've figured out where all the lights and the darks are going and um, really now understand the page a whole lot better. So now when I go in with other colors, it's not going to be as intimidating because I've got a lot of it already kind of worked out already. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so now let's see. I want her to have a warm complexion. Um, I'm going to pick a mid-tone and um, sort of work in the edges of the shadows. Um, let me think here. I'm going to grab this color here for now. This is 1092. And I'm going to work some... I want the cheek area to be a pink. This is like a peachy pink. So I'm going to start in this section here. And now I'm using more oval motion. But still pretty fairly light pressure. Now I'm just going to start building up the mid-tones. Give more detail and specific shadowing. So we have the cheeks here. Alright. Yep. Uh, it's 1092. Mm -hmm. And I will put all the other, the pencil um, names, you know, in the description when the video is over. So if you miss one. Alright, so what I'm doing here is I'm adding a lot more warmth to her cheeks. And just giving it that like pink kind of blushing look. Now this is a fairly textured paper I'm using. Um, if you have a smoother paper, you might not need to worry too much. Um, I'm, sometimes what you're seeing me do is get into the little valleys of the paper. Um, it depends on what you're using, whether or not you need to worry about that. Um, I'm also using this pink color on the end of her nose. Noses tend to be kind of pink like that. So I'm just going in and using it there. I'm also going to use it for the shadow areas of her ear. Again, ears can be very pink. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Alright, so um, now we have like all, all the major pink areas established. The only other area which I do sometimes find to be very pink is right along the edges of the, like, the inner part of the hand, if that makes sense. So where the fingernails are. Along there, and also like the under pads or whatever you want to call it, the fingertips, they can be quite pink. Now we don't see a whole lot of those, so we can kind of not worry about that. And I'm 
also gonna do just the inside right here of that thumb fingernail. Can you guys see okay? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I know. It's early still. That's that's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. Okay, so <laughs> what we have here is um, we have a, a pink layer that we put down. I'm also going to put some pink um, right on the inner part of her lips. So let's see, can you guys see this? Let me zoom in. Whoa, too much, too much. Oh my goodness. Okay. There we go. So. Let's see if I can do this without blocking the camera too much. Um, I'm just going to go on the inner part of the lip line there. On both the top and the bottom lip. Just giving a little bit of contrast there. And that rich peachy pink color. Now I you can do whatever color lips you want. Um you can make her lips really red or more nude. I'm going to do like a peachy pink. So that's the start there. I'm also going to just kind of fill in a little bit of this top lip with less pressure. Like that. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't drink coffee anymore, but sometimes I miss it. Um, okay, now we're going to go into... Let's see what color is next. I have not planned this out, so I apologize. I'm just trying to pick... Next color. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. I'm going to swap on over to 939. And I'm going to work now in the areas right around where I just put down that pink color. And so again, I'm using really light pressure. And you'll find with skin, I'm mostly working in layers, no matter what medium I'm using. Um, I like to layer it up gradually. I find it gives a softer look. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like it already. Yep, now what we're going to do is we're going to build up more depth and realism, more color variation. But getting a, a good base start down really kind of boosts your confidence when you're going to work on it, um, that you're not going to go too far out of line, if you will. <laughs> um, you know, now that we have all the base shadow areas established, we know we're not going to get something too funky, no matter, uh, no matter what happens next. So that's why I recommend doing that. But a lot of people work in different ways. Some people work section at a time. There's nothing wrong with that either. There's no right or wrong with art. Um, I'm just showing you how I do it.
So again, sometimes getting in the little nooks and crannies. If your paper isn't toothy like mine, you might not need to worry about that as much. I just have a bit of a tooth on here. Okay, we're good. So if anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to shout it out. That's what I'm here for. Alright, so now I'm going to go down. Um, this, this area can be kind of intimidating again for that same reason I mentioned before. I am going to give a light layer. So this area of the cheek will actually be a lot darker later, but I'm going to layer it up. And since I do like this color, it has a lot of warmth to it, I am going to give a light layer of this peach all over the darker area of her face. Again, knowing that I, I definitely want to layer more over it later, so I'm not pressing hard. That way I'm not smashing that tooth. Hello, good morning, welcome, I think it's Myrtis, I don't know if I said that wrong, if I did, please, I apologize. Um, probably butcher everybody's name. Oh good, alright. For once, woohoo! All right. So I have no idea exactly how many layers we're going to do at this point, but my goal is to get at least a decent looking piece ready for you in an hour. So we're about halfway through now. Um, well, what I'll do, I'll eventually, um, I'll work towards the the highlights and actually fill them in with a light color. But what I do is I work up the piece all over all at once. I like it to look decent um, as I'm working on it. Like I like to be able to, after I've got the like the shadow layers established, I like to be able to like present the work no matter what stage I'm at, if that makes sense. So what I do is I'll work it up all at once, all over. See, that's why even though I'm trying to focus just on the face, I have a hard time letting go of like the hands and the neck. It's because it's my habit of working all over all at once. Um, and that just kind of carries through. So like, like if I, if I were to stop working on the neck, 
and just work on the face then later on I might forget a color that I've used in the face and miss putting it in the neck and then it will look discolored has that ever happened to you that happens to me all the time so to avoid that problem what I do is I I work up the piece all at once so eventually I will have more color in that but um yeah <laughs> Oh, Maritas. You know, um, I can understand faces being intimidating, but at the same time, the, the best way to learn is just to do it. Um, and so, um, you know, it's just a matter of practice. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, Janet, um, I, I can't really, I don't know why I can't, like, do, like, so I've seen some people, you know, on YouTube and Instagram where they do like, they do like the eye and they finish it completely. And I, like, I've tried working that way, but like, it just ends up looking weird. <laughs> I just don't. So yeah, everybody's different and there's no right or wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah, Don, exactly. There's no right or wrong way to do anything in art, which is part of the awesome part about being an artist is we can really forge our own paths and find what works for us but um if you do struggle with remembering what colors you used where and all that then I would try working it all over at once like I do um because that was my main struggle and once I started working in this way um it became a lot easier for me so um speaking of which I'm going to switch color now and I'm gonna go more towards the darker end um, and work in the shadow areas now um, and to do this let's see what color do I want that's a little too yellow what I have is I have like a little sheet you know <laughs> happy accidents are the best mm-hmm um, so I just have like a little sheet here. I'm just testing the colors on, making sure they're the right color. Yeah, that looks good. It's like, so the one I pulled before was like a little too yellow. I wanted a more redder tone. Uh, you know, I'm making her sort of like my skin tone and I have a lot of red in my skin. Like I'm Irish, so. Um, yep, exactly, Janet. You can learn my recipe and then take it where you want it. So we're going to, um, now I'm going to work in the darker spots. So this area, since it's underneath the hair piece, piece of hair here, not the hair piece, but <laughs> yeah, she's not wearing a hair piece. Uh, you know, you know what I mean? Um, anyway, um, so I'm just working right under there to give some shadows. And right behind the ear is going to be, this is going to be a pretty dark, um, dark spot. Oh, sure. You're welcome. Yep, I'll be using all kinds of different things in my videos. Um, pencils, markers, watercolors, whatever, whatever I have handy. So that's going to look pretty dark at first, but you'll see. So what we're trying to do is establish contrast now. Um, now that we have the general areas of where the darks go. Oh, yep. Well, I, I do use markers sometimes, too. Yep, I'll use all sorts of things on my channel, though. See, so, yep, this one's all pencil. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear the kids downstairs, but they are so super cute. They're playing in their room or something. My downstairs neighbors.
-hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to use this color here. And I start with her cheekbone because that's going to be the darkest spot. But now I'm using a feather touch and just going over the whole area. Again with the flat of the pencil. <laughs> okay, I've got some serious texture going on on this paper. So what I'm doing now is just getting in the, the tooth without burnishing, just sort of gently using the tip of the pencil to get into those little valleys. Now you can burnish later and that's um, also something that I tend to do, but at this early on in the drawing, I'm still trying to keep that paper tooth so I can layer as much as I need to. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. Yep, I use that uh, marker sometimes too, it's great. Alright, so I haven't figured out what color jewel I'm going to use for this um, earring right here. But what I'm going to do is leave a little bit of space right here, right adjacent to the earring. I'm going to leave that white or light, light colored right now. And when I decide what color I'm going to use that jewel, then I'm going to put the reflected color in her face. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting in the little nooks and crannies. This paper is quite textured, like I was saying before, so you might not need to worry too much about that. Um, and all that can be smoothed over later on. So now we have, now that I've darkened up that area there, now I find a lot of the other areas that need to be darkened are kind of standing out to me. So I'm going to go ahead and do those. So right around her nose and right on this little underside of her cheek there. A little shadow under her nose. <laughs> um, yep, I'm using all Prismacolor pencils, and um, what I do is, yeah, I, I, if you watch, I'm, I'm laying the color down with the flat of the pencil. Um, and as for markers, um, it depends on the, the paper, what you're using, if it comes out streaky. Um, sometimes markers, um, they don't like a particular type of paper, so that could be, um, there's a whole lot of factors that go into that. But I have to give a shout out to Ange. Angela, thank you for showing me your work in progress and let me know what you're struggling with. I think, um... You know, if you guys have other problems and you want to see um, other tutorials later, go ahead and just send me your works in progress. My email is lauracolors2 at gmail.com. So just go ahead and send them to me and I can help you out. If 
I have the book or if they're my own um, coloring pages, I'll be sure to be doing those um, sooner rather than later. Um, oh, thank you, Ricky. Ricky Kristen is one of my Facebook admins, ladies. She's amazing. Thank you for all your hard work. It's so good to see you here. Alright, so now, um, at this point here, uh, her shadows and her midtones are fairly well established. What I'm doing now is just finding the darkest areas right under her cheekbone here. That'll have a little bit more color to it. Oh, sure. I'm really glad. I'm, I'm hoping it does help. Um, okay, so now what I want to do, um, just because we're getting short on time, I have 15 minutes left. So what I want to do is I just want to show you really quick how I'd go ahead and burnish and blend out the skin because right now it's still looking a little patchy. So we want to blend it out. So I'm going to use this 927. I don't think it's focusing, but it's a uh, Prismacolor 927 and what I'm going to do is I am going to go over all of the, the whole face and I'm still using fairly light pressure but as I get into the darker areas I will be um, pressing down a little harder. So I'm definitely covering all of the weight of the paper but some with less of this color than others. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't really, I, I just decided to do this um, live stream because Ange asked for help with this page. I didn't really plan on coloring it, so I don't know what she's going to be, but um, I can finish it. So now you can see I am definitely pressing down harder. I'm using circular motions to blend and I'm definitely layering it up. So it's it's about pressure and layering to get a nice smooth result. So I don't know if you can see, but I've gotten rid of all the white of the paper. Now there is a spot here where it's fairly bright and hardly any pencil down, but for the most part, everything has at least a little bit of that, that color there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she could be blonde. She could be any color hair you want, really. So I know I probably won't be able to finish in an hour, but I just wanted to give you a really good head start on where to put the lights and the shadows, what colors to pick, and also how to blend it out. So we'll see how much I can get done. <laughs> So this nose area is kind of funny. What I have here is it's it's going to be a, um, a dark background, so I'm not worried about that line. Oh, sure, you're very welcome. Um, I'm not worried about that line because it'll kind of fade away when I do the dark background. Um, but this this area here on the bridge of her nose is going to get hit with some light, but then 
this little spot here where it dips under, right? So the light's coming from here. So some of that will be a little darker right there. And then now we're getting up to our forehead, which will be light again. So it's sort of like a light, dark, light kind of pattern there. And everybody's face is shaped slightly different, so it's not always going to be the same. But for this particular lady's face, that's that's what we have happening here. So she's got a really pink, pink complexion, which is okay. Um, but if you want to knock that back, then I would try using a little bit of green. Now it sounds crazy. Oh, you're very welcome, Dawn. Well, this one here is, uh, um, in my Etsy shop. Um, it's one of my Valentine's ones. Um, but this will pretty much work on any profile. Um, that you have. And profiles I think are fairly common. So I used a very simple color palette. You can get really wild and crazy and do all kinds of different skin tones. Um, I chose a very, um, the one that I thought was closest to what Ange was going for. Um, oh, good. Oh, I'm glad it came. That was pretty quick. Awesome. I remember sending yours out. Um, yeah, hopefully this helps you, Ange. And it's, uh, close enough to what you were looking for. I believe Anne just was blonde. So you can see now here I'm layering and I'm also pressing quite hard. Now you're going to have a different amount of pressure depending on how toothy your paper is. Since I'm using Bristol Vellum I've got quite a lot of tooth. So you're going to see I could layer for days on this paper and that's part of the reason I like using it. Um, I find it works really well with colored pencils, but if you don't have a toothy paper, paper, yeah, only five days, that's not bad. Um, yeah, if you don't have a super toothy paper, then you might not have to press as hard or, or layer as, as often as I do. All sort of depends. So I'm leaving this little shiny bit, um, blank for now because I'm going to blend in a color there. But I haven't decided what color her earring is going to be. That little gem there. So hopefully, now she looks, oh, it looks much more orange on camera than it does. Hmm. Like, I don't, oh yeah, I look really orange too. Well, I don't know what to tell you about what the camera's saying, but um, it looks a lot brighter on camera. Uh, but in any case, <laughs> here we have a lady. Um, yeah, I think it must be just that the, the light is very poor today. <laughs> Hello. Nice to see you. So I'm going to carry that through. So you can just see a little bit more of the effect that we're getting here. Oh, thank you. Well, hopefully this does make it easier for you. Hopefully you can follow along. It's real time, so um, there's nothing edited out or, you know, it's just a live stream. So hopefully this does make it easier for you. Now I didn't quite get to the hand as much. It's getting up on a, an hour here. But um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free.
to post those in the chat or if you're watching this after then put it in the comments below I'm really happy to help you guys out um, still kind of blending away here So, yep, it's funny how uh, bright it looks. Um, <laughs> I'm actually gonna, just because of how it looks on camera, if it looks too pink for whatever reason for you, um, I'm gonna use this 1021. <laughs> Thank you. And just in some areas, this helping mm -hmm. all right I hope you enjoy it I'm just throwing some of the screen in to areas that I don't want to be as pink and hopefully it's coming up better on camera. Yeah, it's funny, it looks different, but that's okay. You know, the camera picks up what it picks up. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're uh, just about on an hour here. No questions for anybody? Ange, does this help you out? Uh, while we're um, kind of winding down here, I'm going to just finish up her lips. Um, just that way there's something here that looks a little bit more finished. Um, what color? <laughs> the eternal question. What color? Okay, let's grab uh, 1031. Oh, good. I'm glad it helps. I'm just going to go in the corners and along this lip line there. like that and the upper lip because it's almost entirely in shadow I mean the, the light is coming from here and it's being blocked by her nose <clears throat> excuse me by her nose and also the rose the rose on the nose um, we're gonna actually have this upper lip much more in shadow um sure Dawn I can post it up Mm -hmm. Is this something you guys want to see me finish? I can finish it for you guys. Um, I'm probably I need to go though and get some work done soon, but um, I can work on this another day with you. Um, let's see. So now switching back to 1092. This is that nectar color. I'm just gonna work in circular motions and blend that darker color in. Now I'm leaving a little bit. Oh yeah, I can put it in the Facebook group. Is that what you mean? Just post the, the finished picture? Yeah, I can definitely put it in the Facebook group for you. Uh-huh. And I'm going to use this same color that I was using on her lips just to kind of warm up her ear again a little bit. Yeah, I can put it in the Facebook group for you for sure. Oh, 
All right, so we're pretty much where we're gonna be for an hour, um, but hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, where I would go from here is of course I would give the same treatment to the hands and the rest of the neck as I would the face, so I'd blend it out and, um, and also um, maybe darken up some of the shadows um, around her ears and just under her ear and under her um, chin and her choker and all that. But um, hopefully this helps you guys out and I can keep going on this. Um, if that's something you guys want to see me finish, we can definitely do that together um, in another session. So yeah, thanks Ange for asking me and um, I, ho I hope that it uh, goes a lot smoother now for you. Um, and yeah, if you guys like this, don't forget to hit that like button. That helps me out so much. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.